So we are live. We are recording now. Again, uh, like I said before, my name is Shane Barton, and today is the, the really the first in a series of monthly webinars we're going to be hosting, focusing on downtown revitalization. Today, our guest is Colby Kirk, the executive director of One Harlem in Harlan County. Uh, and I'm sure Colby will give a little introduction to, to One Harlan County and, and himself. Uh, but today we're going to focus on his efforts and, and other partners' efforts in Harlan County to not only inventory and assess vacant buildings, but some of the strategies that they deployed uh, really to sort of move those efforts to the next phase of either transitioning ownership or cultivating new investments in some of those properties that they identified. Uh, so, like I said, uh, I will manage the, uh, the waiting room as folks enter. If you have any questions as the presentation goes on, please feel free to enter those in the chat box and we'll circle back to those at the end of the presentation. Uh, and, and just as a, a sort of courtesy, I would invite everyone also to mute uh, their computers if you're not muted. And if you are calling in on a, on a cell phone, I think we may have uh, one or two folks calling in. To mute yourself, you hit star six. That will mute you on your phone on the call in. Uh, and if you need to raise your hand or if you can't figure out how to, to write that question in your chat box, it's star nine to raise your hand. If you're using a mobile device, an iPad or a, a mobile phone, uh, the chat function is in the bottom right under the more where the three little dots are. Uh, and again, if you have any questions, feel free to use the chat box. So uh, without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to Colby Kirk uh, and he can introduce himself and, and we'll go ahead and share a screen. All right, thank you, Shane. I'm gonna try to uh, share the screen now. So I just hit the share the whole screen and now I'm gonna start the presentation. Uh, are you all seeing the actual presentation or are you seeing the presenter mode? <laughs> Is it good? All right, well, uh, like Shane said, my name is Colby Kirk. I am the executive director for a group called One Harlan County. Uh, we're a private uh, 501c3 uh, economic development organization. I I'm funded by the local businesses here in Harlan County and some of our larger employers. Uh, and I work really closely with the, the Harlan County Fiscal Court uh, and their economic development authority to kind of uh, develop our economic development strategy and put it to work. And uh, one of the, the goals as, as I was brought in here uh, just a little more than two and a half years ago was to focus on downtown development. Uh, and so today I'm gonna share a little bit with you uh, about our approach to uh, inventorying vacant property and, and helping try to come up with new ways to bring new life uh, to our downtown. Uh, and so for those of you that, that were at our meeting a couple years ago, I, I started with this slide um, and the, when I was brought into this job uh, during the interview, uh, they told me that Harlan probably had a 70% vacancy rate. Uh, and if you walked through downtown, you saw quite a few empty buildings. Uh, and that is true. Um, but I thought that that seemed very high compared to what, you know, might really be truth on the ground with, with vacancy. And so one of the first things I decided to do was uh, partner with our tourism office. Uh, they also have a downtown development person. Uh, Laura Adkison, and we decided to come up with a way to inventory uh, our buildings in downtown Harlan and try to put it in a visual way where we could share this with our board members, the city council, uh, and other stakeholders who are invested in, in our downtown development. Uh, and so we started with Google Maps. Uh, we, we got a picture like what you see here on the screen and we printed it out and we walked each of these streets and we would put checks on buildings that had tenants in them and we would put X's on buildings that were vacant. Uh, and for the purposes of, of what we're doing, we've only really focused on the ground level stuff. Uh, if our commercial spaces on the ground level have a shop in them or if, if they are sitting empty. Uh, and so um, as we went through and did that, uh, each of these buildings that you see now uh, color, colored in green uh, had a business in them. These were occupied commercial buildings. Uh, we did the same thing for the empty ones. Uh, and that's what you see there in red. Uh, we also highlighted a few other uh, opportunities in town. Uh, these things that you see highlighted in yellow 
the one with the X on it, uh, that building appears in Google Maps, but it is no longer there. Uh, it had been torn down. And then these other yellow boxes were empty lots within the downtown area that were roped off, uh, that weren't being underutilized or no use at all, uh, that we saw potential in for maybe something like a park or um, a food truck pavilion or something in the future that, that might give them a better use than just being a fenced off empty lot. And so if you actually count up all these buildings and do the math, you find that we had 55 buildings with businesses in them, 17 that were vacant, and that means only a 24% vacancy rate. And so we, we thought it was weird that everyone was telling us, man, Harlan has a 70% vacancy rate. Uh, why could that be? And, and I'm sure you'll notice there's trends and I, I'm gonna hover with my mouse pointer. I hope you all can see my pointer uh, on the screen. Uh, as, as traffic leaves downtown Harlan, it, it follows Central Street here uh, to the bypass, the way my cursor is traveling. And, and you'll notice that as the cursor travels down Central Street, it visits a lot of those empty buildings. And so people who visit downtown on their way out, all they see are a majority of these 17 vacant properties. And, and it gives folks a sense that, the, uh, that you know, downtown has been abandoned almost. Uh, and, and so we, we were able to show that with this visual. Uh, and part of my presentation today will be to show you how I create this visual so that you can do this in, in your communities too. Uh, but, it, but it was kind of a, a cool exercise in uh, you know, finding the data and putting it in a way where folks can understand it and understand the reason why people feel that our vacancy rate is higher than it is. And so uh, inventorying buildings is really just the first step uh, and, and what we decided to do after this was to find a way uh, to reach out to the owners of these vacant buildings and, and see if there was something we could uh, do to connect with them to find a new use for their property or to help them get a business started uh, in that commercial space. And so Laura uh, from Harlan Tourism and I worked together on a letter to these uh, vacant building owners. And I'm not going to read this letter to you, but I would be happy to share it. I think Shane probably has a copy of it. Uh, we had shared it with him before we decided to mail these out. Uh, but the gist of it was to share a little bit of our vision for downtown Harlan, talking about uh, some of the momentum we had built with new festivals and activities taking place in the downtown uh, and, and kind of what our plans for the future would be. Uh, but then to also uh, try to get these property owners to buy into that vision. Uh, Laura is a really great writer and, and she came up with a line, I think it's in the third paragraph, that uh, we needed to build partnerships with these owners like themselves who hold the keys to our downtown's future. And I thought, what a great way to say that, because they literally do uh, hold the keys to assets in our community that, that could uh, add value to our downtown areas. Uh, and so after we crafted this letter, we had to come up with a way to get it uh, mailed to these vacant owners. Uh, and so that's where we leaned into some local resources. Uh, and I'll share more on these later, but uh, there are programs available through your property value administrator to help find out who owns buildings in town. Uh, the county clerk's office is an often underutilized resource. Uh, you've got uh, a room full of deeds that you can trace back to when the building was constructed. <clears throat> and so with uh, more modern technology, uh, some PVA offices will even have online tools where you can uh, interact with a map uh, and it will show you uh, who owns a property. Uh, and so we were able to take advantage of those kinds of resources and, and find addresses for each property owner. And we decided to mail them a copy of this letter. Uh, and included with this letter was a short survey, and it was just these questions here, uh, asking if they'd ever considered opening a business in this, uh, this vacant space and, uh, and what might be keeping them from doing that. Uh, so if they wanted to, I could connect them with resources from our economic development office. Uh, and then we also asked them if they might be interested in uh, selling or leasing and, and what price point and how best to get a hold of them. Uh, because a lot of these buildings might have been empty. Uh, they might not have necessarily been on the market. You couldn't find them on Zillow. And so we were trying to find out ways that we could uh, get up with these folks if uh, folks were interested in it. 
Uh, Shane, I can't see if there's any questions. So if, if there are, and I need to stop, just feel free to interrupt me. Um, but you'll recall we had 16, I think, empty buildings in 2019 and we mailed 16 letters. Uh, we received eight responses. And I've you know, kind of blurred things out just to keep it private for the, the building owners. And when we have folks that reach out with interest, I typically share this information. Uh, but from our responses, we saw that a lot of folks were interested in leasing their space. Um, we found that a few were interested in selling their properties. Uh, and they went as far as giving us a price for what they would sell it. And none of these buildings were listed with any real estate agent in the local community. So we were able to uh, help connect them with that if they wanted that. Um, we also pulled together some cool data on kind of what rent was looking like in the downtown area. We noticed that some folks had unrealistic expectations for a, a very high rent and that could explain maybe why their building was vacant. Uh, and we um, also had a, saw a kind of a large uh, fluctuation in kind of asking prices if, if folks were wanting to sell. Uh, but this was good data and when we talked to other building owners in the future if they asked us questions like, you know, well, what, what is the average rent in downtown Harlan and what should I be charging? Uh, but also this was good information to share with people who are wanting to start a business in the downtown area. So we could uh, let them know what kind of costs they should expect uh, if they wanted to lease a space or uh, buy one outright. And so uh, once we had this information, uh, we had kind of talked back and forth with a few property owners about trying to help market their buildings especially if they wanted to sell them. Uh, and of these eight folks that responded, I think six of them lived more than two hours away from Harlan. And so we felt that a, a big part of the reason why their building might've been vacant for so long was that they didn't really have a, a local connection to the place anymore. They were living far away and they weren't putting time and energy into their property. So if we could take it upon ourselves to help promote that, uh, we would try to. And so we put listings for some of these properties on our economic development website. Uh, we have some other commercial spaces available in the community that we help promote. And we thought this would be a good fit. And it, uh, it's not too hard to do if, if you all have an economic development website, I'm sure they could add uh, buildings like this to theirs. Um, and, and there's a lot of cool free resources online to help make uh, flashy promotional materials for uh, real estate or other kind of economic development projects. So I made booklets for our little properties. It was maybe four or five pages. It had information about our community uh, and information about the property. And here's a couple of pictures of what some of those uh, handouts might look like. Um, once we'd connected with these property owners, we would uh, go to the buildings, take some pictures and kind of do some fact finding so we could uh, list some uh, information on like a real estate listing. Uh, and we would put those together in like a handout where we could have those to share with uh, interested folks who wanted to buy or, or lease space. And um, one thing I really like to do, uh, there's a lot of cool historic photographs of downtown Harlan. And, and I would try to find what the building was built for originally and throw a little bit of that in there that uh, just so in case it might inspire someone for here's what the building once was, and it might be what it could be again. And so we did some of that. Um, and I put these flyers together. There's a, a free online uh, graphic design software. It's called Canva. And uh, the SCED, the Southeast Kentucky Economic Development Corporation, they actually did an online training about Canva this morning on their Facebook Live. Uh, and so if you want to find out more, I'll share a little bit about it with you. But there's a lot of, of resources about Canva. It's, it's easy to use. Uh, you kind of just click and drag things into their place. Uh, and it has a free portion of the, of the software that you can do without any cost. And so that's kind of the, the strategy we, uh, we went through and, and inventory buildings, we connected with owners. We uh, kind of put the information we gathered in uh, a format where we could help try to sell it and uh, and we've made some progress. So this was our map in 2019. Uh, and here's what our map looks like today. And you'll notice those purple buildings are ones that are in progress is what I'm calling them. Uh, we've got a few projects in the works uh, and I'm not gonna stand up here and say that each of these projects are a result of our efforts, but I know for sure three of them are. 
and uh, and we've been able to answer questions and connect uh, buildings with tenants uh, because we've gathered this information and put it in this kind of visual format uh, where folks can understand it. And so um, we were able to sell both of the buildings on Main Street, uh, an old hotel and a shop next to it. Uh, and uh, there's a lady that bought the smaller building. She's planning a business for the ground floor and she's living over top of it. Uh, there's some construction going on in the larger building. And then uh, we were also able to connect with the owner of the old Bissell building and uh, sell it for the purposes of uh, the Harlan County Beer Company, which is set to open later this year. Uh, and this was probably the last building I ever thought that would be sold in downtown Harlan, but it, because we were able to connect with her in this way, uh, she lived in Somerset at the time. Uh, and she was willing to sell it to someone who had a cool idea and, and it just worked out. And so we're excited to see some, some new life come into a building that's been vacant in downtown Harlan. I think this one's been vacant for six or seven years now uh, from what I've been told. And so uh, that's some of our momentum. Uh, and, and I wanted to spend the, the second half of this presentation kind of talking about the resources we've used to help visualize this vacancy in our downtown area uh, and kind of walk you through uh, how we did that. And so uh, I mentioned some of these already, you know, starting with the property value administrator, uh, every county has one of those. Um, I, we really take advantage of this uh, Q public software. Uh, a lot of counties in Kentucky have that. It's kind of a, a digital archive of uh, property owners uh, in an interactive map. And I'll, I'll show you that here in just a minute. Um, but also lean into the county clerk's uh, office. Uh, there's a room full of deeds. If you have an address, they can probably help you find an owner if there's a building or a lot that's been sitting empty. Uh, and then there's always uh, free resources online that help kind of make things flashy and put them together. Google Maps has the best satellite photography of, of anywhere and it's open source. So you can take a screenshot of it and use it uh, on anything you might need to. Um, PowerPoint is what I use a lot of. I, I'm going to show you. I made all the maps that you see here in PowerPoint, and I'm going to show you how it, it's really, really simple. Uh, and I think everyone probably has used PowerPoint at some time in their life or another. Uh, and then, of course, Canva, which I mentioned again. Um, and so this next slide is blank, and I'm going to exit out. Uh, can you still see the screen I'm sharing, Shane? Yes, we, we uh, see the white screen there on your PowerPoint presentation. All right, so uh, what I'm going to do with y'all now is I'm going to make one of these downtown inventory maps for another community. And so uh, I'm going to open up our, uh, oh, I didn't think about this. I can't move the top. Let's see if I can move it down here. I want to go to Google Maps first. Can you still see me, Shane? We can. All right. Um, I'm sure everyone has used Google Maps. If not on a desktop, I'm gonna to try to go through it a little slowly. Um, to, to make it from a regular map to a satellite, you just hit the picture in the corner. And then for today's activity, I'm going to take a look at the city of Benham, uh, Benham, Kentucky, which is one of our smaller cities in Harlan County. And we're gonna look at the downtown area there and I'll show you kind of this process of inventorying and, and making a, a map like I've made for uh, some of our other communities. So this is Benham. If anyone's ever been there, it's a, it's a charming little coal camp town uh, in between Cumberland and Lynch. Uh, and it has a kind of a, a smaller downtown area, but uh, it does have a few commercial buildings. And so what I want to do next, once I'm here, is uh, I like to take the labels off when I'm going to take a, a screenshot of Google Maps. I think a lot of these labels are distracting in some way, especially if you're trying to just tell a story about vacancy. And so to, to do that, you're going to come up here with your cursor to this menu uh, with the three lines. And uh, here where it says satellite and labels on, if you just press that, it turns all the labels off. So you're just left with a raw satellite photo uh, from Google. Uh, and then what you need to do next is take a screenshot of this. I'm not sure how to do this on a Mac computer, but on a Windows computer, uh, to take a screenshot, you uh, press the shift key, press and hold the shift key, and then you press and hold the Windows button 
uh, and the Windows button is usually down in the bottom left of the keyboard between Control and Alt. Uh, sometimes it says WIN on it. Uh, sometimes it just has like the Microsoft logo or the Windows logo. So you'll press and hold Shift and then press and hold the Windows button. And then you press uh, the S key. And once you do that, your screen gets dim. I'm not sure if it will on the Zoom, uh, but once you've hit those three keys, uh, your screen will go dim and your cursor will change to a plus sign. And whatever you highlight, once your cursor is changed to that plus sign, uh, you just kind of click and drag a box. Uh, it takes a screenshot of whatever you highlight. And so I have clicked and dragged I'm not sure if you all could see that component as much, uh, but you might see that I've had a little screenshot pop up down here in this corner. Uh, and so the only way that I know to do that was the shift window and S, and then just kind of clicking and highlighting and making a box. And so I have that, it says that that snip has been saved to my clipboard. And so all I need to do now is go back into to PowerPoint, go to a slide, and I've got this blank one already here. Uh, and I'll right click and I will paste and it will throw that screenshot right in my PowerPoint slide. So that's uh, the easiest way I know to get a satellite photo that I can edit. Uh, and, and so I hope that you were able to follow that. Uh, I can show it again later on if I need to. And so once we did this from here, um, you can print out this PowerPoint slide and walk through town and make note of buildings that are occupied or vacant. Uh, and then you can come back to this PowerPoint file and you can edit those shapes on top of these buildings. Uh, and so that's kind of what I'm going to show you how to do now. And so I'm going to go back to the home tab up here. Uh, and if I want to kind of mark a building, I'm going to put a shape over it. And I'm going to start with this building here where my cursor is, the, the one kind of in the center. Uh, it has these solar panels on it. I know this is the Kentucky Coal Museum in Benham. I know it's occupied, it's had, it's had the museum in it for several years now. And so I would want to mark this with a green box on my downtown building map. Uh, and so the way I'm gonna do that is I'm going to insert a rectangle from up here at the top. I'll just click on the rectangle button up here in the drawing box. I'll draw me a rectangle over this building. And you can rotate the shape however you need to. You can shrink the box down to size. It, it doesn't really matter just as long as you've got it there. And, and since this building has a business in it, it's got the museum there, I know that I want to make it uh, green to make, make it occupied. And so to do that, I'll just come up here to this box uh, where it says shape fill and shape outline. And I will change those to the color green. And uh, you could leave it as a solid box like that. Um, you know, red people would know it's vacant or green people would know it's occupied. Uh, if you want to make it kind of see through like I did, uh, it's really easy to do that. You just uh, come back up here near where these colors were and there's a little box here that says format shape. You just click that box and out will pop this uh, pane on the right hand side of the screen. And under fill, you'll see there's a line that says transparency and you can click and drag this or you can type into this box here like 50% and it makes the shape uh, semi-transparent. So I can still see the building that's underneath it and I can still see that it's green so I know that it's occupied. Uh, and I would just go and repeat this for every building in downtown that I would know if it's occupied or if it's vacant. And so uh, like, for example, this building to the left of the museum, uh, I believe this is the, this and that variety store. It is occupied uh, in downtown Benham. And so I could go back and, and do the whole thing over again, make another rectangle and do all those steps, or I can click a rectangle I've already made that's already green and I can right click it and I can copy and I can right click, oops, don't wanna do that. I can right click and paste and it makes a whole other rectangle that I can just click and drag over to the next building if I need to. All right, uh, let's say for example, we have a building that we know is sitting empty in the downtown area. And in downtown Benham, I know this building here, it used to be a, I think it was the Benham Hospital years and years ago. I know it's, it's sitting empty right now. 
And so I want to make a, a shape and a different color. So I'll start over again, make a rectangle. I'll highlight it over the building. I'll just turn it to try to get it over the building in a roundabout way. And since this one's vacant, I want to make it uh, red. So I'll come back to shape fill, make it red. I'll come to the outline and make it red. And if I want to make it transparent, I'll go through those same steps again. I can hit format. And then on the right uh, underneath fill to transparency, I make that 50%. And I've got a red box that I can see through. So uh, that, that's the gist of how to make the maps the way they look. Uh, the next part's a little more tricky. Shane, have I cut out? We can hear your audio, but I believe your video, uh, at least the, the image of your, from your webcam has frozen, okay. but, I think your, but I think your PowerPoint is still Okay, on. well, if that freezes, uh, let me know. You can call me or text me, I apologize. Um, no, you're fine. And, and so once we've get, gotten to this step, I could go through and do it for each of these other buildings, but let's say I'm trying to connect with the owner of this red building. I'm going to uh, use my local resources to find out who owns this building. Uh, and a lot of communities in, in Kentucky uh, have access to the uh, Q public tool. And, and this is a tool that uh, a lot of property value administrators use. You can go to qpublic.net or whatever this address is, schneidercorp.com, and you can search for your state and your county. Uh, you can pull Kentucky counties that have access to this software. Uh, there's different tiers, I guess, to subscribe to it. It costs $19.99 a month for unlimited access to it. Uh, and in our economic development office, we use this quite a bit. Uh, and so I have a, an account to it and I have an account for Harlan County. And once I've done that, I can hit view the map. Uh, and this is a really great program, but you will see that it says access restricted unless you log in. And so you have to have an account to view the actual map. And so I'll log into my account here. And you can see all of Harlan County and it's a GIS map is, is how they use this. And it works very similar to, to Google Maps. You can kind of zoom in on different places. So I'm gonna come up here to Benham. I know Benham's up this way. And I'll go slow because I don't wanna make anyone motion sick. I know that sometimes zooming in on maps can be a little trippy. Uh, but here is Benham. One thing you will note from QPublic is that its satellite photos are not near as nice as Google, uh, Google Maps. These satellite images are probably from 10 to 15 years ago. But the great thing about the city of Benham is it has an, a landmark in the center of town in those tennis courts. So it's pretty easy to tell that the tennis courts are right here where my cursor is. Uh, and, and, and the way QPublic works, uh, you see each of these kind of black uh, shapes, all these different uh, outlines. These are property boundaries. And, and this is like a digitized map of your community. And you can click on any of these property boundaries and it will give you some information about uh, that property. And so I know we wanted to look at the, the former hospital building. It was just next to these tennis courts uh, since it was vacant. And so I can click on the lot where uh, that hospital was and it tells me the owner, which is city of Benham. It tells me what the size of the lot is and it tells me what the tax assessment of that lot is. Uh, and if I want some more information just besides this little snippet, I can hit this button that says report and it will take me to a page just about that property. And again, I see the owner. It shows me that it's owned by the city. It gives me the owner's mailing address uh, and so from this tool, I can find my vacant building. I can click it on the map and it tells me who owns that building and where they get their mail. Uh, and that was some vital information that we needed so that we could write letters uh, to those property owners. Um, but Q Public has a lot of other cool information that sometimes people are interested in knowing. Uh, it tells you again, the size of the lots, but it'll, oftentimes it will tell you the year that the building was built. 
So I know this building in Benham is, uh, was built in 1916. It's uh, 105 years old. Uh, mm -hmm. It will tell you sometimes the, the square footage of the building, uh, what type of structure it is. And at the very bottom, it will have some extra photos of the property uh, that the tax assessor has taken. And it will have an outline of the exterior of the building. So you've kind of got dimensions of what the building looks like on the lot. Uh, and that's a lot of good information if, if you're trying to, you know, make a, a listing of information about the property. Uh, but again, the most vital thing that we were looking for was who owned it and what was their address. And I, I intentionally chose this property because I knew it was owned by the city and it would have their address because I didn't want to share someone's private address with you all today. Um, but, but you can click on any property in that system and it will tell you who owns it and what their mailing address is. Um, like I can go back to the map just by clicking up here where it says map and it will take me right back to, to where I was looking at that property. And I'll just zoom out a hair. And so just to show you another example, if I'd clicked on the building where the coal museum was, it would show that, you know, the state of Kentucky owns that building and that's where that museum is. Uh, and it does that for every property that you would want to click on. Um, again, not every community has this Q Public tool. A, a lot of communities do in, in Eastern Kentucky, uh, but, but if you don't, you could always go to the PVA's office and they might have uh, some type of software in their office you could use, or they would be able to look up something for you based on uh, an address. And so uh, once you've done all that, um, you may want to uh, come up with a design for uh, your building uh, that you could promote on your website. And so that's kind of where this uh, Canva software comes into play. And uh, Canva, again, it has a, a free component that you can use. Um, SCED did a training on it this morning, so I won't go into the minutia of, of how to put a picture into the file or anything. Uh, but you can see I use Canva quite a bit for all kinds of different things. We, uh, we do our economic development digital ads here. I've done uh, pr grant proposals in Canva. Uh, I've got letterhead in here. And uh, I've also made flyers for some of our buildings in our downtowns. And the great thing about Canva is you don't have to be a graphic designer to use it. Because uh, Lord knows I'm not a very good graphic designer but they have templates uh, that you can kind of go through and find one that meets your needs. And so, you know, you can search for like real estate and it will show you different flyers that people put together and you can start from what these are. And all you have to do is just change the pictures and change the words so that it says what you want it to say. And that's exactly what I did with this flyer. I found a, a flyer in this template batch. I'm, I'm, it was a while ago, so I'm sure it's uh, farther down the list now. But uh, all I did was change the names uh, or the words on here and I changed the photos. And, and to change that, it's as simple as, as going to photos that you have uploaded and clicking a photo and dragging it over to it. And so you can see that's a picture from the, the golf course that I just clicked and dragged right into it and it, it ended updated it. And it was super easy to do that. And if you mess up in Canva, it has an undo button, which I'm thankful for. Uh, and so it, it's super simple to use and it has a free component. Uh, you can pay a little extra for it if you want to use it all the time. Uh, you, you know, some business offices might buy a subscription to like a Photoshop software or InDesign. This is a much, much cheaper alternative if you're working on a budget, uh, especially where it has that free side to it. Uh, but yeah, you can see I, I'm, I still make flyers like this for, for properties in our, our downtown area. Uh, and so that's, that's the gist of, of kind of how to make the map and, and how to uh, uh, use those uh, resources that are available to you. Uh, and you can do this for communities, I mean, throughout your counties. And so here's another map that I've made for the city of Cumberland, which is also in Harlan County. Uh, and we've been able to, to try to recreate some of those efforts there. But uh, Shane, that's, that's all I really had uh, as far as uh, the PowerPoint goes, but I would be happy to, to answer any questions about kind of our process and why we did what we did and 
Uh, any other questions y'all might have? Colby, thank you. Th th this was a, a, a great presentation that not only included sort of the story of your all's effort, but provided some really easy technology. And I, and I actually did watch a little bit of the, the Canva training this morning. And, and I also want to say that that's what I use. So when you received the MailChimp or the email advertisement that had the little blue box that had the picture of Colby pointing to one of the maps that he was showing, I, I created that in Canva as well. Uh, and it, it is my go-to. Um, I've, I've been using that for, for a couple years now, and it has made my graphic design life uh, incredibly easy. So I, I also suggest that as, a, as an alternative software to some of the more expensive ones. Um, I would invite anyone, if, if you have a question, uh, feel free to type it into the, to the chat box or raise your hand and, and I can call on you. Uh, I think I've got a couple screens here. Uh, so I'll, I'll just keep going back and forth. But but if you have a question, feel free to, to share it and uh, we'll invite Colby here to respond to it. Paul, I see your hand up. You can unmute yourself. There, there, there we go, I believe. I was going to give you a, there we there go. I'll give go. you a little video with it as well, although that may not be helpful. But anyway, <laughs> uh, first and foremost, great job, Shane. Great job, Colby, as always. He's, uh, he's certainly an asset to, to Harlan County, and uh, as is your knowledge, Shane. Something that, that – um, and I've not had an opportunity to really speak to Colby, although we're both in Harlan County. There's a, about a 45-minute distance between us. Big county. But uh, one, one of the things – that I was curious about, and it's great that we've got both of you on here at the same time. When we're overlaying uh, what Colby was doing, empty buildings, full buildings, things of that nature, when we get to the empty buildings, is there any way we could also designate those? Like, for instance, pretty much all of downtown Cumberland is in a promise zone or opportunity zone. I would really, I think a, an awesome selling point would be if, if we could see what's available from the main street programs, perhaps in Kentucky, uh, opportunity zone, different things like that. Because if you're, if you're promoting an empty building, especially some of the structures we have here are in pretty bad shape, but if there are, if there are fundings available, uh, especially if it's a, an 80, 20, anything like that, that's, that's going on, anything that would be available. Uh, if there was a way we could say, yeah, this, this particular building, uh, would fall under if, if you're using it in this uh, as a nonprofit, it falls under this, you're available for these grants or have contacts with like uh, uh, Kentucky Highland, for instance, some, some information that could go into a packet with that, that could say, here, here's some possible funding sources to purchase the building, or here's some, uh, some avenues you could travel perhaps for grants um, or, or other resources that are out there because one of the things that I have a lot of questions with are, man, I'd love to do something with a business town. I really want to open my own business, but I, I really don't have a lot of money. We've got a little bit put back, but we know $10,000 isn't going to put a roof on that building. Or we know it has to get to a certain point. And, and how do I do that? And I, I don't have, I have limited knowledge. And, and I know you have, you're a, <laughs> you're in a, a uh, a library, a, a virtual cornucopia of knowledge yourself, Shane. And, and with, Colby and some of the other some of the other people that are on this uh, on this meeting, I feel like if we could put an overall package like that together, or, or just an addendum to to what Colby has shown us today, which is awesome, um, I, I think we could move. You know, the the pace would just quicken greatly. If someone sees hope, it's all about hope. So if they they look at a building, they say, "I'd love to do that," but oh my gosh, the roof's bad, the doors have the windows are broken, and you say, "Hey, no, wait a minute, we've got." areas that we can we can help maneuver through some of that with you some facade grants things like that i'll shut up now thank you I, I think what you bring up paul is incredibly important uh because that's really where the the details are and that's where it gets tricky uh there's a number of folks on the call today that could probably speak to sort of how they have maneuvered locally and i'm thinking of, of bailey who i'm going to turn the mic over to here in just a moment um and, and Kitty also offered uh, some resources related to historic registries. I think it's pretty complicated. Uh, actually, complicated is probably the wrong word. It's, it's very intertwined. And in some cases, there are larger programs. In some cases, there are sort of micro-local programs. 
whether we're talking about local incentives, uh, you know, I'm thinking about some of the things that that Jacob Roan and the folks in Pineville have done, some of the stuff that they're working on in Perry County around local incentive packages. But then again, I, you also touched on, you know, a lot of these big broad topics like opportunity zones or even more broadly the promise zone. What does that mean for funding mechanisms? And I'll honestly uh, hear, Paul, I don't know if I can, if, if there's sort of a comprehensive summary that I could even provide you. But I, I think what may be, I think what I'm hearing is that there may be a great opportunity to focus on uh, may perhaps an upcoming webinar specifically on some of those opportunities or programs and how other folks have utilized them or even cultivated and created those in their own communities or in their county to provide those types of incentives. Uh, I, what I would describe it as is a pretty fluid environment that there are some standard things out there, but it also is also, it's kind of complicated in terms of accessing capital. Uh, I think folks often get confused around a, a private business's ability to access grant funds or traditional capital. Um, I, I think, we could all do a, probably a little bit better job of understanding that landscape because it does get quite complicated. Um, but if anything, it, it, I'm inspired perhaps to bring a number of those people together and host an, uh, a future webinar specifically on that topic um, because it, it is, um, there's a lot out there and, and I by no means am an expert and, and I'm often blessed by the audience that I'm able to bring together and, and I'm looking at experts on video here and on this call today. Um, so I, I'm gonna, I know that doesn't answer the question and, and I apologize, but I think it does inspire me to, to sort of identify that as a question we need to ponder some more. But I'm going to turn it over to Bailey because she had a question and she may also be able to speak to some of this as well or provide a little insight on how they've approached that uh, topic there in uh, Perry County and Hazard. So Bailey, I'm going to turn it to you. Feel free to un unmute. Uh, so thank you, Shane. Um, I mean, I can talk a little bit about what we did, but I do have some other questions for Colby afterwards. So if I get distracted, someone remind me of that. Um, but yeah, so in Perry County, um, we don't have any buildings that are currently on the National uh, Historic Register. And that's partly because of a um, of fear on my and a lot of other people's parts of having to meet those historic standards for rehabilitation sometimes. Now, there's a lot of other reasons for that too, but um, I see Katie shaking her head. We'll talk later. Uh, or Katie, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but uh, so what we ended up doing was um, creating our own incentives for downtown. We took a look at what are the things that the city um, collects and what are the things that the city could either reimburse or waive or things like that to kind of start that. Um, so what we ended up doing was creating what we call HDEP Hazard Downtown Incentive Program. And um, we um, offer reimbursements on water and um, some taxes um, for buildings that were vacant prior to whatever they're doing. So um, we do that. And then we also worked with a local foundation that um, made us a grant that we can then uh, do reimbursements of, um, of, of all kinds of different things. We, we broke it down into a few different things like business expansion, facade improvements, uh, beautification, and we will do an 80-20 um, grant with them. So they will turn in um, receipts and we will pay 80% of that out towards um, the, these different businesses that are getting full. Uh, we started that about a year ago and we've got currently four businesses that have taken advantage of that. And we've got a bunch of others that are, that are working on applications right now. So that's what we did locally. Um, we also have had people... Um, take advantage of some of our local um, our local banks that have, you know, they want to see good things too, um, especially if the local bank owns the property um, because of foreclosure or whatever. Um, sometimes they'll make a deal, that kind of thing. So we've, we've done some of that. Um, but that, that's kind of what we've done locally with our own personal incentives. Um, beyond that though, my question for Colby was, you had touched on at the beginning, and this is a huge issue for us, is really unrealistic expectations of price for some of these buildings. 
Um, we have had uh, most of our buildings that had realistic rental expectations and realistic um, sales prices have honestly gone, um, or at least they've been looked at. There's been movement on them in some form or another. It's all of those others <laughs> that have those really unrealistic expectations. Um, and we're just not having any movement with those. Um, so have you had any luck with doing anything to try to push those forward? We've, we've tried the, the sensible sit down conversation and the here's the comparables and you know, we, we've done a lot of that and we're just not having any movement on some of those. I would say it's mixed uh, and I apologize that my camera's not working. I, I don't know why it looks like it's on for me, but it must have frozen up. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, it was good to gather this data so that we could take it back to them and say, hey, you know, just so you know, you're asking for probably twice the average rent in downtown Harlan. And, and that might be kind of an indicator for why your property has remained vacant in these rounds you are occupied. Uh, and they haven't come down yet, but, you know, some of them are holding out. Uh, one of the buildings that we sold, they wanted a quarter of a million dollars for it. And it sold for way much less than that. Uh, I think after they saw an appraisal come in and were shocked at the state of their building, because uh, at least in our case, uh, some of these folks live hours away. One lady lives in California. She hasn't seen her building in five years. Yep. And she had no idea there was grass growing on the first floor. She, she couldn't understand that there was a, a leak that bad in the roof that it would drip all the way down. <laughs> Uh, and so, so some folks ha have changed and have, have come around to that. Um, I will say once folks found out we had a place that you could rent for $200 a month, that one was rented within about three weeks. Uh, it was a small a church congregation that, that ended up into that space. Um, but uh, it, it's been kind of a, of a mix of that. And I, I, I think the, the selling prices have been easier to talk down than the, the rental prices so far. Okay. Thank, thanks, Colby. I've, I've often wondered as well, uh, what is the tipping point uh, for kind of the holdouts, if you will? And, and I'm also interested to see how this story plays out as we do start to see some investment happening. Uh, and, and if that new investment with the brewery is, is going to push some of those holdouts to dig their heels in a little more. Um, there in yeah, Harlan. that's something that we've actually seen recently. Um, I've had three different owners of buildings that had unrealistic expectations to begin with see other buildings sell and they all just jacked up their price. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I, I think that story's still being written, right, in, in, in all of our communities. Um, and, and one thing I did note here is, is I think another future webinar that would probably be great, and, and Bailey, you've inspired this one in some sense and, and, and seeing Kitty's reaction as well. But I think, I think it would be great for us also to have a conversation in the future around the historic tax credits and, and sort of the, the myths around that. And, and what are you beholden to when you enter that process? Uh, or what you're not, because I, I know there's a lot of misconceptions and, and sort of misunderstandings about what you can and can't do with investments. And it's often, it's kind of frightening, I think, for folks when they think they have to use an 18th century building material, horse hair plaster or something like that. That's not the case. No. Um, but, but Kitty, would, would, would you like to, to speak to that for, for a minute or two, and, unless there's any other questions or, around this presentation today? Seeing none, go ahead, Kitty. Sure. Um, I'm Kitty Duguda. I'm actually the state Main Street coordinator, but I wear a lot of different hats at the Kentucky Heritage Council. And we would be more than happy to have um, a training for both the National Register and the Historic Tax Credits. There is a lot of misconceptions and I don't know how that ever started, um, but being in a national registered district affords a property owner the ability to use the historic tax credits if they so choose. They are not bound to do that. Um, national register basically indicates that your area or a particular property, because we do have individually listed properties, are historically significant. Um, that was part of the, the National Preservation Act in 1966. Um, 
it does not prevent anything from being demolished. It does give it a, a little time frame, you know, so people will will act accordingly. Um, you do not have to do anything. For example, your whole downtown could be in a national register district. You don't have to do anything any different than what you're already doing. But if you want to access those historic tax credits, then that's what what helps developers or an individual building owner to make those um, improvements. I would dare say, I don't know this, but I'm gonna guess that Gil Holland is using or may potentially use those on his building in Harlan with the brewery. He's very um, well versed in tax credits and I could see how that would have been a part of the package that they may have taken to a bank to get funding. So you don't have to do anything, but if you choose to do it, then yes, you have to follow the standards, just like you would do with any other project that, that had requirements. So don't be scared, it's something good. <laughs> thank, thank you, Kitty. I think if anything, uh, we will, I, I will reach out to you and, and sure. coordinate with you and Lisa and we'll, we'll get us a, a time set in the future and, um, I think having a, a, a just a conversation about that specifically would, would be great for us. Right. It's simply education. And that's, you know, we like to do those educational outreach things to kind of take care of the vicious rumors that have been going around for 50 years. So we're it's, good. it's, uh, it's intimidating, right? When, when you, when you may not know all the details and, and we're not talking about a cheap, Thing, right? This isn't like getting a, a, a pop out of a vending machine. This is a lifelong investment folks are making and there's some strategic decisions that have to be made. So uh, I'll, I'll coordinate with you to uh, get that scheduled and, and we'll, we'll pull that together. Okay. We've got about four minutes left uh, and, and I think we could probably get to another question uh, if anyone has one. Uh, so if, if there are any questions, feel free to, to raise your hand or uh, throw it in the, the chat box. What I would ask uh, in our closing moments here, if you will, some of you received my email through the uh, through our newsletter list. Uh, you probably received that through a MailChimp. You may have received a direct email from me. That means I have you on an email list somewhere and I will be contacting you in the future. If you were forwarded this email from a colleague, uh, that you did not receive from me, would you mind adding your email address to the chat box? And I will get you added to my future correspondence, uh, inviting you to participate and join these. I don't want to miss you uh, in any future webinars, and that way I can get you added to a, our ongoing list of folks who receive those downtown resources. Um, in closing, one thing that I, that I do want to reiterate here is that you don't have to be an expert to do this work, right? Like everything that Colby talked about today is something that any of us on this call and the volunteers that we work with could do. Um, and and I, I know there are a number of inventorying efforts going on uh, around the region, uh, but I, what I don't often hear about is that piece that Colby took it to where they reach out and contact and, and utilize the Q public, utilize uh, the, the local PVA office, those sorts of things. So, um, you know, I, I just want to reiterate that you don't have to be an expert to, to do what Colby said. You just have to be interested and, and have a little intuition about how to get started. But the other thing that I want to remind you is that you don't have to do this alone. And in fact, I would suggest that you don't. That, that my recommendation uh, would be to think about how you can use that building inventorying process as a community engagement process to get folks walking in the street, to get folks on the sidewalk. I know we have to be very cautious now and hopefully as we move into the spring and, and as vaccinations ramp up and people feel more comfortable in, in crowds, um, that we'll be able to bring people together uh, a little more comfortably. But if you do plan to do this, think of it as a way to get a group of energized people on the street. Because if you've ever uh, given a, a downtown tour 
or if you have parked and, and walked in a downtown, you obviously know that the way that you experience that community is way different when you're upright on two feet than when you're sitting in a car going 25. It's a huge difference. Uh, and, and it's always a benefit to, uh, to really experience your, your built environment at that slower pace. Uh, so I would invite you to consider that. And, and if you are considering moving forward with that and need some help thinking about what that looks like or uh, how you could sort of build on this, please reach out. Uh, and I am more than willing to support you in that effort uh, to think about what that could look like for your community. So we are about one minute out from three o'clock right now. Uh, I wanna give everyone one more opportunity if you've got a burning question. Uh, if not, uh, I would invite you all to join me in, in maybe using our reactions down in the bottom right. And let's, let's celebrate Colby and, and we can click on our, our little, uh, our hands clapping or our thumbs up, wh whatever you prefer. Um, we'll just, we'll show Kobe that we care and that we appreciate him today. Um, and I appreciate you all for, for taking the time and joining us. That, that, that looks amazing. Oh, that's a beautiful heart, Paul. Thank you. Uh, Colby, would, would you like to share any closing thoughts before we wrap up here in our last 30 seconds or so? Just a, a quick thank you, Shane, for, for giving us the opportunity to talk about, uh, some of the work we're doing here in Harlan County and, just to reiterate what Shane said at the beginning, you don't have to be an expert to do this because Lord knows we're not experts in this, but uh, with some hard work and ingenuity, I think you can make a difference in any community. Colby, thank you so much. Missy, was that was that a quick question? Was that a hand going up? Okay. Well, th thank you all. If you have any questions, please let me know. Feel free to shoot me an email, shane.barton at uky.edu. And Mindy, I, I will be... Uh, I have this recording right now. What I do not know is where it will be housed for the long term. We're working on uh, sort of making sure that we have that website and web page to, to start hosting some of these and placing some of these uh, webinars in the future. So as soon as I get that uh, figured out with our communications team, I will be sending out an email to all of those contacts that I invited to this, which is one of the reasons that I wanted to get folks emails if they if they received it uh, either from a colleague, a friend, or perhaps saw it listed on Facebook. Uh, so I will be sending emails out as soon as I get this hosted online um, so that you can watch it uh, or share it with other folks. Uh, in the meantime, thank you all so much uh, for everything you're doing and the commitment you're making in your community. It makes my work a lot easier um, and, and I love being there step by step with you. So I'm looking forward to our next conversations. If you're in the R3 uh, program, uh, know that there will be another email coming soon uh, for us to sort of schedule our next team meetings to sort of talk about uh, what some of our next steps should be uh, as we move into the spring. So without, without further ado, thank you all and, and have a great day and, and we'll talk soon.